What's up, future respiratory therapists? Hey, in this video, we're gonna be using the Drager ventilator to look at compliance and resistance and how that affects parameters in volume control ventilation. Let's dive in. All right, so we're here in volume control. We have a set tidal volume of 450 milliliters. We have a flow of 40 liters per minute and a PEEP of five and a rate of 16. Okay, now, we're going to show and illustrate in this segment the effects that compliance and resistance has on your parameters. So when I say parameters, what I mean is, is how much volume are we putting in, what happens to pressure when we put that volume in, and how does compliance and resistance affect that. Now I want to show you for baseline sakes, this is where we're starting. So I have a test lung here, and I have one rubber band around this test lung this is going to represent our starting point so that I can show you a decrease in compliance as well as an increase in compliance as well as a change in airway resistance. So the first thing I want to do here is from baseline, I want to do an inspiratory hold. I want you to notice what this waveform looks like. Now this is going to be very, very important as we continue in this video, but also as we get into future videos where we're comparing pressure control and PRVC. That's part two and part three of this series, okay? So right now, notice how this breath went in, and then when I did the hold, there was a little settling of the pressure, so there's a, a depression in the pressure, and that's because when the, the, the ventilator holds that volume in there inside the, the test lung, there's a settling of a pressure. <clears throat> now, we come back here and look at this and analyze this. We can just move my cursor here and it'll tell me that my airway pressure right here is 24.8. Right here is 24.9. Right here is 24.9. 25. So we can see here that our plateau pressure right now is 25. When we look at our peak inspiratory pressure, we see that it was 30.5. So I'm going to round up. I'm going to say that our peak inspiratory pressure was 30, is 31. I'm going to say that our plateau pressure, come back over here and look at it, is 25. And when I look at the volume delivered down here, I can see that our peak volume delivered was right at 450 milliliters. Okay? So... That's, that's where we're starting from, from baseline. Now what I want to do now is I want to take another rubber band and I'm going to put it around this test lung. So the vent's probably going to holler at me. There we go. I'm going to unfreeze this. Let's give this a second to, to kind of balance out here. Okay. <clears throat> so now you can see where I have two rubber bands. I put a yellow one on. We're starting with the, with the blue one. That was baseline. Now what we've done here is just made this test lung a little stiffer. It's not as compliant as what it was from baseline. This is going to illustrate the, the development of maybe ARDS, maybe ventilator-acquired pneumonia, uh, maybe even a pulmonary fibrosis who comes in with very, very stiff lungs to begin with. Now, again, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to look at do an inspiratory hold. Look at my plateau pressure. Let it go. I'm going to freeze the waveform here. Now look, it looks identical to the first one, except it's a little higher. So when we look at this, we come in here and we look at our plateau pressure. Right here, our plateau pressure is saying 35, 34.8, 35.2. So we're going to say 35 for plateau. And we're going to say 40 for peak inspiratory pressure. 35 plateau, 40 for peak inspiratory pressure. Now when we look at our volume delivered, we are at 449.8. We're going to call that 450 milliliters. Okay. Now unfreeze this. So now what I want to demonstrate is what happens when I take both of these rubber bands off. This test lung is going to become more compliant. So this would illustrate either somebody who is getting better and their lungs are becoming more compliant or maybe even illustrate of an emphysematic who comes in with very, very compliant lungs to begin with, okay? 
So you can already see here that our pressures have gone down from that one breath. Okay? So this is no rubber bands on. What does an increase in compliance look like? Inspiratory hold. Let's assess our values here. We see our plateau pressure here is coming in at 16.7, 16.6, 16.5. So we're going to call that 17. And we're going to call our peak inspiratory pressure 23.7. We're going to call it 24. So our peak inspiratory pressure is 24. Our plateau pressure, what do we say, 16.7? Yep, so we're going to call our plateau pressure rounded up to 17. And let's look at the volume that was delivered here. 449.6. We're going to round it up to 400. And 50 milliliters. Now that demonstrates baseline compliance, decrease in compliance, and increase in compliance. So what I want to do now is I want to go back to baseline. So I'm going to put I'm going to put my blue rubber band back on where we started. This is where we started, if you'll remember. So we started like this. And what I want to do now is I want to take this little adapter, and if you look in there, you can see there's a very small hole. That hole is going to demonstrate or it's going to simulate an increase in airway resistance. So what I've done now is I've put this, this airway resistance simulator in line and I have our baseline rubber band on the test lung. Now when we watch this, we can see obviously that we have a very high peak inspiratory pressure happening. When I do an inspiratory hold, we get something like this. Now look at how interesting this is. We have a peak inspiratory pressure way up here. Let me redo it. We see that our peak inspiratory pressure is way up here, but look at our plateau pressure. It falls way down. The difference in PIP and plateau is your airway resistance. So if we chart these numbers, we're getting 22, 22, 24, 20, 20, right around 22. We're going to call it 22, and we're going to look at our peak inspiratory pressure and call it 63. 63, 22, and then we look at our volume here, and our peak volume was delivered at 449.4. We're going to call that 450. Okay? Now, this gives us the illustration of what compliance and resistance looks like in volume control. Let's look at the data that we've documented and talk it out here for just a second. All right, now, now we looked at the ventilator and now I've been taking notes. So I've been writing down all of the parameters that we have gathered. So now it's time to analyze these parameters and see what we can learn from them. Okay. And so what we know here is that what I was doing was we were in volume control. We looked at baseline versus decreased compliance, increased compliance, and increased airway resistance. And what we were doing is we were comparing peak inspiratory pressure to plateau pressure to tidal volume. And look what we know. Everything we know about volume control is true right here. No matter what happened in compliance or resistance, tidal volume remained constant. And that's what volume control is. Volume control is the constant delivery of a set tidal volume. And pressure will vary based off of compliance and resistance. And so what we see here is that we had a baseline where our peak inspiratory pressure was 31 needs a centimeters of water pressure. Plateau pressure, 31, 25 centimeters of water pressure. Now what we did there was we decreased the compliance and look what happened. Peak inspiratory pressure went up. Also, plateau pressure increased from baseline. So this is where we started. We decreased the compliance. Both of our pressures went up. This is interesting. Now when we took both rubber bands off and we, we caused the test lung to become more compliant, which illustrates an increase in compliance, then look what happened. Compared to baseline, our peak inspiratory pressure went down. Our plateau pressure decreased. So right there you can see in volume control how a decrease in compliance causes your pressures to increase and your volume stays constant. Where, where we have an increase in compliance, you see your pressures go down 
and volume stays constant. Now when you get to airway resistance, something very interesting happened. Look what happened to peak inspiratory pressure. It went way up compared from baseline. Baseline was 31, it doubled that. But look what happened to plateau pressure. It essentially stayed the same. It actually stayed in the low 20s. 25 was baseline, 22 was where our plateau pressure was with increased airway resistance and our tidal volume stayed normal at 450 mLs. So remember, I've told you this multiple times. If you remember how this looked, I'll show you like this. If we look at a pressure waveform here, our baseline looks something like this. Awesome. Our decreased compliance, pressure went up, so did plateau pressure. Our increased compliance, pressure went down, plateau pressure went down. Our airway resistance, pressure went way up, plateau pressure stayed unchanged. So you see the difference when looking at these waveforms and looking at this data, the difference is compliance causes plateau and PIP to change. So if compliance gets worse, both of these increase. If compliance gets better or improves, both of these will decrease. But if it's an airway resistance problem, then only your peak inspiratory pressure will increase. And that's because an airway resistance problem has no effect on the compliance of the alveoli. You have to remember that. When you think static compliance, you're thinking alveoli. When you're thinking airway resistance, you're thinking the lumen size, the, the side, the diameter of the airways. And that's the effect it has when you're in volume control ventilation. Now, I want to tell you about something here. I've got a free course right here on my teachable platform. All you have to do is go to this link. You can enroll in this free course to get access to free cheat sheets. I've got stuff on there on waveforms. All of this will be on there. I've got something on there for a clinical simulation exam. First time stepping into an ICU checklist. I've got uh, a cheat sheet over x-rays. I've got an APRV cheat sheet in the works. All kinds of stuff coming for you real soon. You want to get in there so you can check back and realize that um, you know there's new stuff coming there all the time. You can also find my respiratory coach TMC boot camp also there for, for, for purchase if you're interested in enrolling in that. This is a comprehensive course that's gonna aid you, Pat, help you pass your TMC exam. But even if you're in a program, it's gonna help you pass your program too. So have that. And then I currently also have my uh, basic ABG interpretation course for purchase. If you're interested, it's there. But I do want you to know, this is completely free. All you gotta do is enroll and get into it. And that's, Volume control, compliance and resistance changes. Y'all know where to find me. All the socials, Instagram at Respiratory Coach, TikTok at Respiratory Coach, Twitter at Coach RRT. Send me an email to respiratorycoach at gmail.com if you are interested. You can text me, 817-968-7035. I would love for you to join my texting platform where I send out occasional inspirational, motivational, educational thoughts just to help excite you and, 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 and encourage you along your journey to being a respiratory therapist. Don't forget to check out the link in the video description for the link to the free resources. And remember, average is easy. Don't be it.